Well, for those listening, we are talking with Derek Bros, founder of Houston Free Thinkers, and the website is thehoustonfreethinkers.com. And uh, Derek gave a very interesting interview with We Are Change recently with Luke Krudowski, and uh, they were discussing uh, Derek's background. Um, Derek, you've been fairly involved. First of all, let's talk about your website, your YouTube channel, and some of the activism you're involved in right now. Um, what are some of the projects uh, you've been involved in, and what are some of the things that you're um, going to be doing in the in the recent future? Yeah, um, so I've been an, an activist uh, for about four years and full time for about two years now. Uh, I started the Houston Free Thinkers first as a blog in early 2010, and by the summer of 2010, we began having meetings in my apartment, and it's grown now over the past four years to include the website and. You know, we work in alternative journalism. We have a radio show called Freethinker Radio out here on a local station. We're part of a community farm. I live in the Freethinker house with a couple other guys where we have free Wi-Fi. We've got a community library. We do mm-hmm. film screenings here. We do Skillshare classes on everything from how to brew your own beer to how to can your vegetables or how to speak Spanish. Uh, we do protest actions. Um, we go to city council and uh, work on a variety of different things and offer a number of, so, of solutions because that's what we focus on is building solutions. So I've been involved mainly with doing work with the group and going out to uh, events around the country, doing interviews, getting more into journalism over the past year. And my particular, I guess, brand of solo activism, I call the Conscious Resistance. My website is theconsciousresistance.com. And I've been sort of focusing on launching that. The Houston Freethinkers has, over the past couple years, gotten to a point where it's going to grow whether I'm around or a couple other people are around or not. It's just beyond anything we could have imagined with thousands of people supporting through the internet and um, hundreds of people from within the city who come and get involved in various ways. So I've just been focusing on building my own particular message, uh, which is to say I focus on solutions, action, agorism, anarchy, things like that. And I just got back from hosting uh, temporarily Adam versus the man on the East Coast uh, for Adam Kokesh while he is fighting his case and got a lot of support while I was doing that for the positivity that I bring to this message and some encouragement. And so I've been doing a crowdfunding campaign for the past couple of weeks. I've got just under two weeks left on that. It's an Indiegogo campaign to raise some funds to really launch the conscious resistance, not just as my show, because I've done it as a radio show before. I've done radio for a couple of years and I've kind of stepped away from that, but to really launch a whole platform, uh, a new media platform, as we're seeing more and more independent alternative new media platforms launch. I would like to make one that focuses on music and art and culture, but also anarchy and liberty and politics and things of that sort. Um, and, highlights what's happening here in Houston because I think we have a huge underground community that's been developing for the past couple years of people who, whether they call themselves activists or not, are really building community alternatives, and that's what I want to focus on. So that's what I would like my show and this whole platform to center around, whether there's people who are writers or contributors. I'm looking for different people, and that's what I'm working on at the present moment. Right. Well, I think you're going to be successful at that. I've watched a few of your videos, and I think that you're a major asset to the truth community because you have a natural gift uh, of, of speaking about these spiritual concepts to people that perhaps may not have thought about them before. This is not about the, the physical realm. And you talked about uh, shamanism and anarchy and, and the link between the two. And there's a lot of us waking up to this concept some of us woke up years ago. Some people are just waking up to this concept now that there is a direct link between liberty ideals and spirituality. Could you elaborate just a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was a. Uh, uh, I mentioned I've been doing radio for a while, and for the first year I was doing radio, the show I was doing was called The Voice of the Resistance. And I did that for about a year, and um, it fit my activism at the time. And then uh, June 2012 for whatever reason, varying uh, number of things came across my path and affected me. And I really just wanted to stop spending so much time talking about they and them and these uh, supposed ruling class and focusing more on that internal battle. And I think it was because I was going through a lot of that myself and stepping into uh, some very powerful events that helped me kind of become more aware of my own self. And I decided to rename the show and my general activism, the conscious resistance and since that, you know, it's been over a year now on that focus, really just 
starting to feel more comfortable speaking about these things because I've been interested in shamanism and I think I've been on a shamanic path, a shamanic journey, uh, both a physical one and a mental one for a couple years now. And um, after a while, you really can't separate yourself. You know, it, it would kind of be like where I, I run amongst activi activist circles and I'm busy there. And then I would go to some meditations or some spiritual events um, around Houston. And some of my spiritual friends, you know, would appreciate the activism I'm doing, but activist work I'm doing, but they were kind of like, just stop talking about the bad stuff and it'll go away. Or they would, you know, encourage me to bring more of the positive message into what I do. And then some of the people on the other activist side would somewhat see those things as a, as a waste of time. And it seemed to be that way for a while. And just really the past year, I've been unable to, for better or worse, um, to separate those sides of myself anymore. Right. And I think that's an important step for me and a really important step for all of us to kind of merge all of our different interests and to really to see the connections between uh, liberty, freedom, and spirituality, um, you know, without going too much into detail, you know, which we can if you would like, um, it's essentially just recognizing, as you said, that this is more than just a battle on the physical plane, that we can recognize and um, point out the different ways the government is intruding on our freedoms in the physical realm, and we can see those and we can create solutions, and those are all positive things. But at the end of the day, if we haven't also seen the ways that we are being programmed on a subconscious, uh, mental, spiritual level, both by ourselves and by the external forces around us, then we're only, I believe, going to create a situation that is um, just as bad as this one or possibly worse. If, if you can think about what it would be like to erase all the government but to have an entire society of people who are still lost amongst themselves, I think that would be uh, chaos. I agree, and I think that we have to go through uh, certain trials, if you will, um, to to be self sufficient, to be a sustainable community, and uh, I guess that's what I've been trying to learn in my travels, living out in the middle of the desert for a year without internet, and uh, not being around like minds. Actually, going from scratch and introducing myself to neighbors, and 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 trying to develop friendship in that way, w with varying results, by the way, I must say. But yeah. uh, it's um, well. Let me let me ask you this before we get into your background. Where do you think? that we need to focus some of our attention when we when we consider this liberty movement in terms of raising consciousness where do you see um, what I would call I don't know low vibrational frequency consciousness that needs to be immediately addressed um, and, and upgraded if you will um, um, consciousness raised uh, because I see without getting into names and personalities just a lot of things that could obviously be improved well I think that's going to be an individual thing. Obviously, uh, we, you know, I ascribe to uh, the individualist method of, of achieving change, and that's why I like the philosophy of voluntarism and, <clears throat> and of anarchy of self-rule. So um, I can throw out some, some ideas that I have uh, for, for ways that I've been trying to improve myself because that's kind of what I try to do as well is, um, uh, I guess you could say, work on not judging others by simply just recognizing people for where they are, but also being aware to be like, well, that's where they're at, and um, I'll do whatever I can to help them further along if, if they're open to it. But at the same time, just using that at, and not to, to down-talk other people, but to recognize, well, that's where they're at, but I don't want to be that way. I would rather do this. And so some of the things that I'm choosing to do instead of uh, getting caught up in ego of activism is, for example, doing interviews like this, I like to uh, remind people that none of this, although I'm the person you're listening to and I'm being interviewed, that none of this is about me or about you or about Adam Kokesh or any of these uh, people that you hear on different talk shows and radio shows and podcasts. Some people refer to them as celebritarians. That really it's not about any of us. It's about this message and about spreading this message to reach each other. And I think if we focus on that, that's not to say to forget ourselves because we are all amazing, free, independent, beautiful human beings uh, on our own, but together as empowered individuals, we can help work through these things. And you mentioned talking to your neighbors. And I mean, that's probably one of the strongest things that there is to do right now. I mean, I, uh, I often reflect on how when I'm traveling, I'll go through different cities or, and I'll meet people, complete strangers, and we have these amazing open conversations. And then I come home to my own area or my own city and then I'll like close back up, you know, I'm all of a sudden I'm not talking to people I see on the streets, like, you know, and I, and I don't know what it is, but 
that's that's a simple and may seem trite, but a, I think a worthy effort. Right. That I that I try to make is just to literally to have conversations because the the thing about it is that ego is going to creep up in a number of ways, and that's what it's really about. Is that I personally believe that the so called ruling class, the want to be uh, new world order, however you identify them, they play off of not only our fear but off our, off of our ego, and they play off us off of each other. And know how to manipulate us. I mean, they have uh, unlimited resources to study the psychology of each and every one of us, and how um, our habits are, our shopping habits, and every you know they know the ins and outs of our brains and how we will react. And they attempt to do that to keep us in these, as you said, lower vibrational um, actions to play us against each other. And some of those things I think can include starting to lose focus um, and to to believe that you know you are. Um, going to be able to do this by yourself or that um, you don't need other people or that uh, YouTube hits or money or things like that are more important than waking people up and, and changing yourself and changing the world. <laughs> Whenever I meet someone and I tell them I have a channel, if they ask me right away how many hits I get, I just roll my eyes and I just – I find the quickest way to exit the conversation because – <laughs> I, I know it's not going to go somewhere very good if they're all about just numbers and fame. And I hear what you're saying. And so instead of giving a super critical outlook on, on just what's not so conscious in the liberty movement, you're instead focusing on leading by example the internal journey instead of looking outwardly, pointing outwardly at what's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Because what I've uh, come to see myself is that the matrix is a reflection of ourselves. Right. And so, um, you know, and that's kind of comes from a phrase that I picked up during my my journey in lockup, which I guess we're going to get to in a moment. Um, but just a phrase that I picked up at one of the what they call behavior modification centers, um, and they used to tell everybody there, if you spot it, you got it, because there was a program that was designed, or at least that's what they uh, they proposed that it was mm -hmm. it was designed to keep you um, from repeating negative behaviors and to kind of hold each other accountable. And in, so, in looking back, I can see how that could have been helpful, but it wasn't really in the environment that, that, that it was provided. But I do remember that phrase, and basically they'd say, like, you know, if you find yourself being critical of someone else or you're judging somebody, you know, you're in your mind, you're just, like, hating on this person. And sometimes, you know, we're, we've all experienced this, and you just have to, like, pull back and like, whoa, why am I getting so angry at this person? And when you stop and you really analyze it, I, I guarantee you 90 95% of the time, the things that you are being critical about this other person, this external force outside of you or that you believe is outside of you, um, you may recognize some of those same behaviors and traits in your own actions and your own behaviors. And it's a big eye opener. It's a mirror to reflect on yourself and it can give you an opportunity to work on some of those issues to be like, wow, you know what? I do some of those same things. And I wonder if it drives other people crazy or maybe the reason I'm seeing them is because I don't like them about myself. And then you can decide what to do from there. But that's really what I see is that, you know, if I'm starting to be critical, obviously there's certain behaviors and things we that need to be called out. I'm not saying that if there's right. uh, things in the so-called movement or activism or things that we see in the world that we shouldn't um, hold people accountable. But when it's, um, I would say, unnecessary or fear-based or ego-based, take time to evaluate yourself. And just in general, it's just about being conscious, being slow, slower in every moment that you have because, um, again, the, uh, the state, the media – the government and their all their apparatus, uh, they thrive off our confusion, our fear, and they put us in a position where we're working jobs that we don't really like and you know, thinking that there's only one model to live life, and that's go to school, get married, go to college, uh, get a job, and everything's going to be happy and, and all that. And so they try to teach us that anything outside of that is unacceptable and can basically just give us these false models to buy into. And in that sort of mindset, you don't have time to sit down and to reflect on who you are. You don't have five minutes a day to sit down and think about what it was that really stressed you out or what, you know, or and to relieve yourself of those things. And they build up and they build up and then you're in traffic one day and you start screaming and cussing at people and then you get into a car wreck and then you're mad about that and then you go to work and you're late and, you know, it just builds up. And it's because we don't take the time to, <clears throat> to meditate or to reflect 